So good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're joining us. Thank you for taking time out of your day for the Salesforce Admins webinar, Three Ways to Increase Executive Adoption of Salesforce. I'm very excited today to be joined by President of Cloud Adoption Solutions, Shannon Gregg. You can follow her on Twitter, at Shannon J. Gregg. My name is Mike Gerhold. I am Director of Admin Evangelism at Salesforce. Now, before we get the webinar started, of course, uh, we have to have our forward-looking statement, which is just a reminder that Salesforce is a publicly traded company, so please make all of your purchasing decisions based on current features and functionality. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about how you can connect with us. So we're very social at Salesforce Admins. We want you to be very social with us. So if you are on Twitter, you can follow us on Twitter at Salesforce Admins, no I. And you can find other Salesforce Admins out there in the ecosystem by using the hashtag AwesomeAdmin. If you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube, you can find our page, Salesforce Admin. And of course, don't forget, the one place that I visit every single day, and you should too, admin.salesforce.com, your home for all of great content like the one you're watching now, including blog posts and the Salesforce Admins podcast, which I'm a huge fan of. And much like the Salesforce Admins podcast is recorded, this webinar will also be recorded. It's amazing. And you can watch the recording because the video will be posted to our YouTube page, which is Salesforce Admin, along with the webinar recap page that you can find at bit.ly slash executive adoption tips, all lowercase. And as you're watching this, you might have questions. I do. So if you are already logged into our Salesforce Trailblazer community, jump on over to the group Salesforce Admins webinars, and you can ask your question there. Or if you're not logged in, just go to bit.ly slash admin webinar group. Make sure you pay attention to those capitals. And don't wait till the very end to ask your question. We will start answering them as soon as we can. We will choose a few for the very end when we do our live Q&A round with Shannon. So start posting those there. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to today's agenda and Shannon. Thank you so much, Mike, and welcome, everybody. I hope that you're ready to take a trailblazing jaunt through the past with me. But this is recent past, as in a little more Instagram memories and a little less Friendster. Like really recently, probably in the past week, when you were having your weekly lunch with the C-suite. You know, a little admin to executive time. Oh, wait. You guys aren't on your avocado toast lunch date status with the executive team? Well, I'm Shannon Gregg, and you know what? Neither am I. <laughs> In fact, the last time I had social time with an executive was, and I'm checking my watch, quarter to never. But today, we're going to talk through some Jedi mind tricks that my fellow admins can use to do the impossible, which is get executives bought into and then even encouraging executive use of Salesforce. So we're gonna cover three primary tips, which you can see on your screen. One, gain executive adoption of Salesforce. Two, improve overall Salesforce adoption. Three, engage continuously to drive user acceptance. We'll cover a few awesome resources, and then we'll take, as Mike mentioned, your live Q&A. So the first thing we want to talk about is how to gain executive adoption of Salesforce. And this is a tough one for so many of us. This is something that I think we have a real challenge with because, like you, I love Salesforce. Like, I really love Salesforce. In fact, I've considered taking Salesforce as my last name, which is a really big deal because I didn't even take my husband's. Shannon Salesforce sounds so good to me. <laughs> but this is our problem. We love Salesforce so much as admins, and we expect our busy, harried, overwhelmed executives to simply see the light and do the same. That's not going to happen, so it's time for us to talk about how we're going to launch our influencer campaign. So the first tip I want to give you to get your executives interested and involved is to remember that they approve the purchase. 
So whoever's budget this came out of, from the president to the chief sales or revenue officer, the chief marketing officer, they were hoping to get something out of Salesforce. They watched an awesome demo. They heard their friends talking about Salesforce. They'd used it before at a company. And for some reason, they decided they wanted to approve the purchase. So we're gonna dig into that. That's the first thing I want you to do, to think about what they were hoping to get out of it and even figure that out because it's gonna be the basis of your influencer campaign. The next thing I want you to remember is that executives love data to drive decisions. They are a data-driven group. They love using knowledge to inform the strategy that they are using for the company. And so if you can think about the reports and dashboards that they cannot live without and focus on those, that is going to help you to drive your executive adoption. Work with them, and we'll talk in a little bit about ways that you can get inside of their office to figure out which reports and dashboards they want on a regular basis to drive their company meetings, to drive their board of director meetings, to report out to stakeholders. And those are the things that you're going to work with on them to help figure out what they need to see on a regular basis or even on an ad hoc basis. And then the other tip I want to give you is that top-down adoption drives organizations to change. I can remember being at Dreamforce and hearing that Michael Dell was the number one user of Salesforce at Dell Computers. And when you think about that top-down adoption, it really helps the rest of the organization to rally around it. So on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see the Rogers Technology Diffusion Model. And the only thing you need to remember from this, and it's your typical bell curve, is on the left-hand side are your innovators and early adopters. These are the people who sleep outside when a new iPhone is coming out. These are the people who just love technology. They're going to try it because it's new. They were the first ones to strap some virtual reality goggles onto their faces. Those are the executives you want to start with. So when you're looking for the people who are very innovative and great at adopting technology, those are the ones you want to launch your internal executive influencer campaign with. The next thing I want you to do when you're thinking about your executive adoption campaign is how you can improve overall Salesforce adoption in the rest of your organization. So in the first tip, we talked about providing value to the executives, what value you as an admin can provide to them. And the second one, we're going to talk about the art of war, which is surround them. Surround those executives with people in the rest of the organization who are also using and interested in using Salesforce. So the adopt system, which we're going to walk through here, is a way for you to help make Salesforce irresistible to the rest of your company. So as an overview, we're going to address the what's in it for me for your entire team. Everybody's got something different that they're focused on from sales to marketing to finance to operations. And so we want to think like those people. Look for new ways and places to use Salesforce. We're going to come up with a few tips that you can use to replace systems that are already in use with Salesforce, which will make it irresistible to some of your users. Train them in different methods at different times so that people are constantly focused with Salesforce and how they can use it better and different every day. Looking at processes and, and SOPs, which are your standard operating processes, even if you're a small organization and have those in an informal way, keeping those up to date. And then testing your user base to deliver just-in-time training right when they need it and encouragement when they feel like it's a little too much for them to handle. We're first going to look at A, which is articulate. So when you're thinking about this one, this is where you're going to focus on that early adopter or innovator executive who you know very clearly what's in it for them. So some examples that I wanted to give you that I have found to be really successful in the past are starting with a chief marketing officer. Marketing metrics prove the ROI of everything that they're spending money on. Marketing budgets are big and they're hard to justify. So every year, here when the executives or the board of directors go back to their drawing board and they're looking at the budgets and the profit and loss or P&L statements for their teams, marketing is an easy one for them to attack. Trade shows are expensive. Webinars are expensive. Building email lists is challenging. So CMOs who adopt Salesforce will really help them to justify their budget. They're easily able to track back to campaigns 
or influences that have occurred and the ability for them to gain that data is as easy as pressing a button. Or if you're looking at a chief sales or chief revenue officer, they are really interested in sales opportunity metrics so that they can have coaching opportunities for their sales reps or their sales VPs. They may wanna take it all the way down to deal velocity, customer acquisition journeys or costs, and how many days opportunities sit in the stage. So for example, if you have a sales rep who has a particular opportunity that is lasting over 90 days and the typical deal in your company has a decision in 45, your sales leaders and your sales executives know that's somebody who needs some coaching. That's an opportunity that needs some help. So allowing them to develop KPIs and metrics using Salesforce will help benefit the growth of their sales reps and accelerate bookings, which is what they're all interested in. And then finally, your chief operating officer has a lot to gain from Salesforce too, and these are the ones who often don't realize it if you're particularly using Sales Cloud. Opportunity metrics can give them resource planning capabilities that are really fantastic for their organization. So if you know that your win rate, for example, is 30%, and they're able to see with some visibility 180 days in advance, they know if 30% of these close, this is how many full-time employees I'm gonna need, and they can rebalance, refill positions or understand where they need to move full-time headcount. Those are great ways for you to get these executives understanding what's in it for them by you as the admin articulating their needs. The next one is for you to demonstrate. And this is one of my favorites for admins. This is where we sometimes have to think creatively about where we can get new ways for them to use Salesforce. So one-on-one -on -one pipeline meetings between the chief sales or chief revenue officer and a VP of sales or in a smaller organization between the person who heads up the sales department and the individual salespeople. One-on-one -on -one pipeline meetings to look at what they've got in their forecast and top of funnel and how that matches up with the metrics you've been able to help them to devise using your reports and dashboards will help them to understand where they are in their pipeline management. So instead of using an Excel spreadsheet or a PowerPoint, as we've seen plenty of salespeople do, they can go directly to Salesforce and operate in real time, making changes to opportunities as necessary. One-on-one -on -one opportunities between the VP of sales and individual contributors when they're looking particularly at line item details on opportunities, probabilities, potential close dates, and other activities inside. Instead of them downloading that to Excel or using a different method of management, encourage them and show them how to use them during their one-on-one -on -one meetings. Any integration that you can help to influence or provide between any accounting systems or ERP systems are really helpful. Salesforce talks very nicely to other systems so that your finance team can understand exactly what is coming down the pipe to them. And then any other meeting prep that is necessary for the board or management meetings, a lot of times executives are pulling down this data and they're putting it onto PowerPoint presentations. And if you show them how they can be the hero that walks into that executive meeting every Monday or every Friday, whenever they have it, and they can show live in Salesforce what's happening in their organization, they're gonna look super cool amongst their teammates. The next one is for you to help orient them to the system. And all of your users are going to have different ways that they need to learn about how to use Salesforce, and one size definitely does not fit all. A lot of us have, as admins are very familiar with onboarding training. Somebody starts new, you have a brand new sales rep on Monday, they come in, they fill out their HR paperwork, and the very next thing they do is come to you for Salesforce training. And then you don't see them for three, five, six weeks, and before you know it, they're trying to enter opportunities and they can't remember anything you told them on the first day. So consider different ways that you can serve up training to them on the job or in snackable ways that they can use just in time when they need it. And remember, salespeople very often are kinesthetic learners. This means they learn by doing. They don't do very well with reading long process documentation. That's why they've chosen to be in a field where they are constantly out and on the go and executives are the exact same way. They are running from meeting to meeting to meeting and so they do really well when you provide them with content that can be consumed really quickly in a taxi cab in between meetings when they have six minutes. So think about ways that you can give them things that are short 
and to the point that they can access when they need it. Live training at their team meetings, and this is one that can be challenging for us as admins, but when you know that you've got something that you can deliver that the whole team needs and you can do it live in person, taking questions and walking them through how to do it themselves, that is an awesome way for you to get everybody understanding how to orient themselves to the system. And then providing one-on-one -on -one assistance. We're all really good with taking in support requests and understanding what our help desk looks like, even if it's just a direct email to you. But letting people know, hey, if you need some help, I'm here for you. I'm going to help you figure out how to save that opportunity when you're returning that error code. That is a really good way to get them open and talking to you and oriented to the system. Next, you want to check their progress and continue to progress it. That is a really fun way to use that word in two ways, but I mean it. I have heard this saying for a long time, good, better, best, never let it rest. And I would say the exact same thing for all of your processes or your standard operating procedures. Again, if you're in a smaller company, these, these will be informal, but you're still keeping track of them. So if you are devising a written process and at the top, you've got a block that says, here's who authored it. This is when I authored it. This is what it pertains to. Include a block for yourself to come back and check it that tells you when you should refer to it again, whether it's quarterly or annually, so that you know you should come back and check it. One of the other things I really love is I know that Salesforce three times a year is going to come out with a new release. And there are so many ways we as admins can consume these releases. You can watch them live, which is my favorite thing to do. You can read release notes. There are release recaps. And when you see those, the first thing you should do is go through and say, hey, what pertains to my business? What is something that my users or executives are going to be interested in? And what do I need to modify now in one of my SOPs or informal processes? And make that change. Small orgs can and should keep formal process documents. And one of the reasons why I really think about this all the time when I'm working with small organizations is that if you've got that really nice hockey stick growth, which is something we're all looking for, and you hire a lot of people at once, you want them to be able to do some self-serving even without you holding their hand all of the time. The last one in our second tip, which is to surround the executives with the rest of the organization, really surround them like we're a nice army of people, is to test them. Test your user base so that you can deliver just-in-time training and encouragement. So stop by an executive standing team meeting, and we'll talk a little bit now about how you can get in front of the executives. So you can offer one-on-one -on -one support when you're walking next to them. Ask them what is keeping them from using Salesforce to show their team's progress at their board meetings or at their executive team huddles. Talk to them about the things that are challenging for them. A lot of times I like to just ask a leading question by saying, you know, what's bothering you in Salesforce right now? Or the last time you scratched your head and said, I really don't understand Salesforce, what was causing that? And they'll open up to you. So if you ask something very specific and provocative, it will allow you to start to open that door to that executive who truly does want to understand better how they can roll over at two o'clock in the morning, pick up their phone and look at their Salesforce dashboard to understand what's happening in their organization. Make user surveys and informal check-ins part of your own personal service level agreement between yourself and the people that you work with. So you can use something really fun like a chatter poll. I love chatter polls. Or you can make it even more formal with a survey tool that you use in your organization. But once you find out what's holding your users back, you'll be able to train up to that. And then my last tip on this is to involve users at all levels in your user acceptance tests. So if you are launching a new feature and you're inside of your sandbox, get some people on different teams to come in and try it out for you. When you write your test scripts and say, go to this box and take a screenshot and put it in here, not only will they understand it a little bit better, but they'll also become your cheerleaders and they'll spread the good news throughout your organization. So we've covered how to provide value to the executives, how to talk about what the value is for them, and we've also covered how to surround them and the rest of the organization. And the last tip I want to talk about is continuous engagement that will drive user acceptance. In the academic world, 
User acceptance means what we all know we struggle with, user adoption. You'll hear both of those terms. But the most important fun thing I want to talk about is using excitement and flair. And yes, it's a little bit like office space. But man, even grown-ups like to have fun at work. You remember that feeling when you were in third grade and you got a gold star in your test when the teacher was handing it back? You were so pumped up to see that? Just because we're grown-ups doesn't mean we don't like to have fun anymore. So you've been probably to a Salesforce user group meeting or Dreamforce or on one of these webinars. And once you've experienced something like a world tour or any other Salesforce event, it was so experiential for you. You knew as soon as you stepped in, this is going to be fun, I'm going to learn, and this is going to be a great use of my time. You can recreate that exact same feeling at your organization. Plan your launch or your relaunch and promote it just as you would any other new product introduction. So you can see in this picture, I got some stickers from the Salesforce store and I got some clear bags from the dollar store. And I'll tell you what, guys, the dollar store is the admin's best friend when you're trying to plan something really fun. They've got so many things in this beautiful shade of blue. You can buy giant bowls and put popcorn all over the place. You can print out clouds everywhere. And I love to cover these three things. One, have a kickoff so that everybody knows leading up to it, hey, October 1st is going to be an exciting day here at our company. You can put posters around. You can fly around people's desks. If you have a remote workforce, you can use chatter to your advantage. You can text people pictures. I've also gone to Vistaprint and made postcards that I've sent to the homes of the people who don't come into an office every day. And just let them know, October 1st is gonna be an amazing day. We're gonna relaunch Salesforce. And once you start getting that type of excitement, you really wanna capitalize on it. Pick a custom hashtag. It could be something that has to do with your particular company. I love hashtag working out loud. It's something I learned from Salesforce a few years ago. And I think for me, it always helps to cross that bridge with the people who are a little nervous about letting everybody see all of their work. And then choose an executive sponsor. Get them all wrapped in and make sure that they're spreading the good word across the organization. You really want to be pervasive too. So this isn't a one-time thing. Just like your onboarding training, you don't want to do it one time and forget about it. You know that commercial, set it and forget it? That is the opposite of what you want to do when you're driving user adoption in your organization with your executives. There is a visual management concept, and you don't have to be a Six Sigma expert to understand this. If you've ever gone to a place and seen a sign that says, it's been 82 days since our last accident, that is visual management. And so think about the ways that you can make sure that Salesforce is very visual. Stickers on people's desks, notes on chatter, ways that you can keep it in front of them that says, hey, this is fun, this is visible, and we are going to have a really good time with this. And it, it does take weeks to drive new habits. So consider that, remember that, and know that one life training will not be enough. You are now like a very creative artistic director as an admin, and you're looking for different ways to make the same outcome happen depending on the people that you're working with. So allow your creativity to flow. This is the best part about being an admin. You get to reinvent yourself all of the time based on the things that you're running through your initiatives with Salesforce. So allow that creativity to come through and it will be contagious. We have a few resources that I'm super excited about, and I cannot wait for you to get your hands on these. On the left-hand side, we have three blogs that I really, really love. Best practices, tips, and resources for admins, getting your company excited about new technology, and best practices for driving end-user adoption of Salesforce. In the middle is a note that there is a new and fun trailhead trail called Empower Your Salesforce Users, and I think you are gonna love that one. And on the right hand side is an ebook I put together with even more pictures of how to make it fun for your organization on sales technology user adoption. Thanks, Shannon. That was really informative. Um, and we have a whole bunch of questions that came in through the community. So I'm going to go ahead and, and 
throw a few of those at you if you don't mind, uh, and then we'll we'll cover up the wrapping that slide. Um, can you talk about uh, maybe executives that have moved on uh, since approving the purchase of Salesforce, uh, and and someone has come in to replace them? What would your advice be for the admin in that role? That is an excellent question and something that we're faced with very often as admins. Executives do move on and executives move out. And so one of the best ways to get your executive reinvolved once you decide who is your champion, who's going to be your primary focus, early adopter innovator, is to say to them, have you used a CRM system before? Do you have ways that you want to unlock potential out of the data in our organization? What are you struggling with? So that you can start to develop what is really your USP or your unique selling proposition for that particular executive. So while they may not have been the one who initially approved the purchase, you can get underneath what they'd love to see and then you can restart your influencer campaign with those execs. Love it. Um, and along those lines, we'll, we'll kind of stick with a very transitional mode. Um, let's talk about when you're a Salesforce admin or you have uh, users that are remote, um, or maybe maybe the executives remote. How do you how do you engage with them at the same level that you would if you were in the office? That is a great question. It's becoming even more of a reality as we start to move to an officeless base of workers. As you're working with knowledge workers, we're going to continue to see people who are remotely based. And these, I think, are the ones that are the most fun because that's where, as an admin, you get to unlock your creativity. So one is really driving use of chatter. I know I mentioned it a bunch of times, but I am a true believer that an organization who uses chatter is going to feel a little bit more connected and engaged. The next is to use video whenever possible. And you do not have to look perfect to be on video. You can just jump on and look at them face to face. And this works really well with remote or international teams. And the third is find ways to meet them where they're at. So if they're going to go to a trade show, you can send notes or you can send information. If they are at their house, you can send mailers. Um, I oftentimes just recommend working with the HR department because they'll help you send those mailers out. But thinking creatively about meeting them where they're at and ways that you can view them on screen or reach them online is really fun. Yes, time zones are, are always a challenge sometimes. Um, I, I know you've worked with a lot of people uh, and, and probably run into a lot of admins. What are some of the ways that you have helped or you've seen admins define adoption? This is so great. Adoption is a problem with so many organizations with so many different things, not just technology, not just Salesforce. It could be a new change in procedure on any given day. And one of the things that I think we as admins sometimes forget to do is to empower ourselves. As admins, we could report to just about anybody. We might be in the IT shop, we might be in the finance shop, we might be in the sales shop. A lot of times, because we're such wide practitioners, we forget that we are able to influence people in multiple departments in multiple ways. And so you have to be able to say to yourself, hey, I'm going to grab this bull by the horns and I'm going to run it head on and give yourself the authority to do that. So when you start to figure out how you can run the adoption, somebody else probably isn't going to do it for you or say, hey, admin, I love you. It's time for you to start using your brain to drive adoption. You get to be a self-starter and you get to use all of these tools that are available to you to help people get really excited about using Salesforce. And they'll all have their different reasons, whether it's they want data, they want reports, they want 41% more time to be productive, to have available selling time to them. They want predictable ways to know what's happening in their finance or operation department. Once you figure that out, you use that as your cornerstone and you start pushing people to adopt this system that we all know and love so dearly. Completely agree. So uh, going over the wrap up slides really quick, uh, if you're in the group and I already see there's some questions coming into the group, bit.ly slash admin webinar group. Don't forget the capitalizations there. Uh, 
there will be a survey that will pop up when the webinar ends, which will be very soon. And of course, don't forget the slides will also be posted to bit.ly slash executive adoption tips. So with that, I want to thank Shannon for taking time out of her day, and thank you for taking time out of your day to join us on the Salesforce Admins webinar. Have a fantastic Wednesday. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much.